My friend and I made a pumpkin explode using only rubber bands. Tonight, we've also got some new tech tips and the return of Kitchen Chronicles. Three segments, five minutes, here we go. This is the Studio Review. Hey friends, welcome back to the Studio Review. It's been a while. How are you doing? Hey, real quick, before we dive in, I wanna give you three important updates. Update number one, congratulations to Jack Neary for winning the first ever Studio Review crew neck. Jack, that'll be on its way to you soon. Update number two is that my friend Preston has surpassed me ever so slightly in our race to get to 1,000 subscribers. We've still got a long way to go, but you can help me out by clicking subscribe right down there, and that'll give you the chance to win $100. And update number three is that we've made it to 45 states in the great 50 states experiment. So if you know anyone in these five states, you should say Send them the video that I'm linking right up here. Okay, enough of that. Without further ado, it's time to blow some stuff up. This is a new segment called Don't Try This at Home. All right, so I enlisted my friend Kyle to help me out with this experiment because it was way too big of a job for just one man. So first on the docket is a watermelon. I'd seen this done on the internet and I really wanted to try it. And eventually after about 20 minutes, there were like legit water droplets forming around the rubber bands. And then at one point it was just like streaming, kind of like a faucet. Okay, so with the sweet taste of success in our mouths, we moved on to our next victim, a pumpkin, which by the way, is surprisingly hard to find in stores after November 1st. I actually started getting pretty discouraged. I was like, man, this worked on the watermelon, but there's no way this is gonna work on the pumpkin. But Kyle gave me a pep talk and we kept going. I was just about ready to give up when we started seeing some weird bubbles on the surface and then eventually some cracks. I see it cracking. Really? And then... <laughs> Okay, last on our grocery list was a two liter of soda. We got Sprite Zero because it's sugar free, which means that if it explodes, there's no sticky residue. Joke's on me though, because the watermelon ended up leaving a ton of sticky residue. And on this one, by the way, I actually whittled down the cap with a knife beforehand so that it would be even easier to break if a little pressure was applied. And after like half an hour, Kyle looked it up online to see if anyone had done this successfully. And we found this one guy who did like a thousand rubber bands and still couldn't get it to explode. So uh, we just started poking it with a fireplace poker. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you think we should explode using rubber bands, but until next time, this has been Don't Try This at Home. Now it's time for some tips on tech use that will hopefully make your life easier. This is Tech Specs. I don't know about you, but I can never keep all the chargers for my devices straight. Apple has their own thing going on. My headphones use the micro USB cable. My running watch uses a separate charger. It's a mess. So I made my own charging station and it's one of the best things I've ever done. Check this out. So I got a pack of these cord organizers from Amazon for like eight bucks and then a power strip that has two USB ports on the end. I put the power strip at the back of my desk like this and then I attached the cord organizer at the very edge. And then I just found one of every single type of charger I own and hung them off the side here. That way, whenever I need to charge something, I have a buffet of options waiting for me neatly organized right here. You plug it in and once it's done charging, it goes right back in the organizer. I liked it so much that I made a separate one for my camera gear right down here in the studio. But that's it. If you wanna try that out, I hope it makes your life a little bit easier. And for the last segment tonight, we're bringing back a recurring piece from season one. This is Kitchen Chronicles. What's up, guys? 
guys, welcome back to Kitchen Chronicles. Today we're gonna to be making a chocolate peanut butter banana protein shake. So what you're gonna need is milk, a banana, peanut butter, chocolate protein powder, and a blender. But first things first, before we get started, I need to show you the right way to open a banana. All right, so you've got a banana right here. You might think, okay, he's gonna tell me to go from this end or maybe this end. Wrong, the correct way to open a banana is to break it in half, like that. You might think I'm joking, but that is literally how I open a banana every time. And just for future reference, the more ripe a banana is, the more you want to pull outwards instead of downwards, or else it'll just kind of smush in the middle. But as you can see, it's not smushed at all right here. So from there, you just peel it and you're good to go. Got two ready to go banana halves. All right, so you're just gonna start off by putting some milk in the blender, and then you toss in the bananas, and then the peanut butter, and then replace the cap, and start to blend. I like to add the protein after it's already blending because otherwise it kind of clumps up on the walls of the blender. And once it looks like it's blended up, you're good to go. But that's it for this edition of Kitchen Chronicles. I'll see you next time. Hey, before you go, I just wanna let you know that November is Men's Health Month, and a lot of organizations are specifically highlighting men's mental health. And that's not because men's mental health is any more important than anyone else's, but it's because a lot of times our culture tells men that they need to tough it out or that seeking help would come across as weak. And that couldn't be further from the truth. So make sure that you check in on the people that you love and see how they're doing. But that's it for this episode. Make sure you click subscribe right here so you don't miss out on episode 10, which comes out next Saturday. And until then, just know that even when it doesn't feel like it, it's gonna be okay. I'll see you soon.